marketing, at least from my perspective, as someone that's not a marketing professional, is that it takes time, right? Um, and so, you know, I've been very good about understanding that it's a long-term approach. So when marketing comes to me with an idea, I don't expect to see that immediate result on that item next week, right? But they'll say, Natasha, you got to give it six months. You got to you got to give it a year. And I did trust the marketing professionals and allowing them to guide me and trust them and say, OK, you're going to invest in, you know, whatever it may be in your website. And, you know, but you can't just say, oh, I'm going to invest in the website. I'm going to see the result tomorrow. Um, and I allow the opportunity for it to happen over time. And it has. And that's exactly, you know, it continues to grow over the years. Um, so I think that the long term goals are are important because sometimes you don't always see, you know, immediate results. Um, and I, I think that was something that I had to learn and kind of trust the process at times. We're back with Over a Pint the podcast that focuses on marketing today. Uh, I'm really excited about this uh, This one, Kurt. Um, I love talking to marketing people. I really like talking to people who aren't like quote unquote in marketing to get their take on marketing because I think they have a really, really interesting perspective. And today we've got on Natasha Mizra. Natasha is the CEO, the founder of Mizra Law. We're going to be talking to her about how she got into this practice, how she approaches marketing, and why she is not just another suit, which is her tag, and I love that. But before we get into all of this, as always, my main man, Mr. Kurt Lingle, VP over at Celtic Advertising. You got me, Pat McGovern, Director of New Biz over at Acedia. Woo! Let's do this. Uh, Natasha, welcome to the podcast. We're going to start with you. It's called Over a Pint for a very good reason, because we like having our beers here most of the time. There's been a few <laughs> occasions where we don't have that, but most of the time we do. Natasha, you've got the first one. You're first up. What are you enjoying today? Well, first of all, thank you for having me this afternoon. I really appreciate it. Uh, probably the most challenging thing you asked was to pick a particular beer. So I picked Lining Kugel's Summer Shandy. It's 82 degrees today and it's almost Memorial Day weekend and kicking off the start of the summer. That's a good one. That's a great call. That's a great call. Natasha, like, what about is it, is it, well, I got a question because I haven't been outside. So is it 82 degrees outside right now here in the Brew City? Is it that, is. Well, wow. it's supposed to be. According to the according to the weather, I'm looking out a window right now. <laughs> Well, I hope so, I hope you're right. Yeah, so 82 right now. What's the high tomorrow? 59. Going down. <laughs> well, Mr. Lingo, what do you got? What do you enjoy? Well, you know, I, you know, I I had to change this a little bit. I uh, I just a few weeks ago we had um, some folks on from Wyoming, um, the Wyoming Weed and Pest Council, and Pat. This just showed up like <gasps> literally minutes oh, before we went on the air with so this interview. Good. So this yeah. is a uh, one of their Yeti mugs that's branded yep. "Keep Wyoming Wild and Beautiful." They're in the uh, they're all about invasive species and making sure that the ecosystems and wildlife are preserved. So I got this. I'm promoting everything Wyoming today, so I've got this. Thank you, Erica and Julie. And then you know what I'm going to do later on? I've got a Wyoming beer here. This is from Roadhouse Brewing. It's the um, their Mountain Style IPA. So I think I'm going to pour one of these into here later on as a tribute to our friends out in the cowboy state. So anyways, nice. cheers. Nice. Cheers. Okay. Cheers. Uh, <laughs> I knew we had this interview today, uh, but I forgot about beer. So I reached in and luckily I've got a, there was something cold in there. It's a Miller high life, the champagne of beer. So I'm going to be enjoying that today. Can't go wrong with that. Can you? No, it's old school. Oh, Lainey's is good too. Yeah, they're all good. Well, I know. Lainey's is a great call. Lainey's a great call. All right, let's get into this. Natasha. Um, why don't you begin? Give us a little bit about your story. I heard this, you know, several months ago when we first met, but for our audience, give us a little bit of background about you and then we'll get into the, into the marketing. Sure. Um, well, I am the founder and owner of Natasha Misra Law. 
So it's a personal injury firm uh, in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, that's focused on representing individuals that are, you know, in auto, truck, and motorcycle accidents primarily. Um, and so I founded in 2018. Um, I had worked for, you know, a large injury firm for over 10 years, had gained my experience there, um, handled a lot of cases and clients, and had the opportunity to really learn and kind of master my field. But in 2018, we dismantled. Um, that firm was undergoing some changes. Man managing partners were retiring. Um, so I had the opportunity uh, to make a choice in my career as to whether to make a lateral move and go to another firm or to take that opportunity and open up my own, you know, my own office. Um, and that's exactly what I did in 2018. And I've never looked back. Um, since then, you know, my office has continued to grow. I have a great team of people that work for me, primarily all women. Um, and I feel as though we're dedicated to our staff or to our <clears> clients. Um, and uh, it's really been a great experience. As part of it, I've had to grow in, you know, in the marketing aspect as well. So yes, I'm a lawyer um, and I've had to you know, rely upon you know, professionals in your industry um, to help build that aspect you know, of what I do as well. Um, so it's been you know, a great few years and I, I really appreciate all the people that have come along the journey with me. Super interesting. A lot to unpack there. So let's start with, so your firm is going under, your old firm starts to go under a transformation around 2018 as you decide, hey, I've got, I could, I've got two paths. I could go to another law firm, get a job there, do my thing. I could start my, my own. And you make it sound so easy, Natasha, but just take, take us through like what was going through your head how did you come to that decision like this is going to be a better path for me well i i'm a believer that i i had two choices to make and i always felt that you can't really have reward without some level of risk um and i figured that it was a risk worth taking because i mean if it ended up being something that didn't work out i could always go back right i could always go work mm -hmm. for somebody else um but ultimately i was looking to you know, build a practice that embodied kind of what I believe in as, you know, as a lawyer um, and as a business professional. Um, and so I took that chance and I had people behind me, meaning I had staff that were willing to follow me. I had clients that followed me as well who believed in me um, to help build that business um, and help make it grow. Um, so for that reason, um, it was just that risk that I decided to take. Cool. Hey, 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 Pat, can I, I just want to, can I just stay in that for one second? Because I actually am fascinated because, uh, I mean, I mean, Natasha, you're, you're an entrepreneur, you're a business owner. And I, I, I'm always fascinated with, you know, what pushed you to do that. And Pat kind of started guiding that question. And it's like, I, I guess if I could dig a little bit deeper, do you think looking back that, you know, business ownership, being an entrepreneur, however you want to coin it, was this something that was in your DNA or was this something that, you know, I'm also a big believer that in life, whether it's business, personal, we come, opportunities present themselves. There's a knock on the door. There's a crisscross that we come through, whether it's, and we're forced to make decisions. There, there are opportunities, whether we were asking for them or not. This seemed like an opportunity. I'm just kind of curious. Was it the opportunity? Was it something that maybe was hidden in your, in your DNA? Like, yeah, it makes sense. I'm just kind of, maybe just. I think it was a combination a of both. I think it's, okay. you need to realize when an opportunity is presented upon you, right? Mm -hmm. um, sometimes you don't realize that you have an opportunity because you might decide to take what might seem like an easier, quicker route. Um, so I had to analyze, and it was one of the hardest decisions and probably, you know, the moment, a pivotal moment in my life and career um, to make that choice. Um, so yeah, the opportunity knocked, but I had to recognize it. And I've also, you know, inherently have kind of been bred from a family that, you know, was business minded as well, um, that I wanted to kind of create a practice that embodied who I am um, and get to be, you know, the female lawyer that, that I always wanted, you know, wanted to do and, and support and embody that in my team as well. Cool. Natasha, for the for the listeners, do you mind just telling us like Personal injury, what does that entail? What, what What's involved with that? Just so we're all on the same page of what like a personal injury lawyer is. Sure. So anytime someone is, you know, can be injured, usually in an accident um, as a result of, of another party's, you know, oftentimes negligence, um, I represent those individuals. Most commonly, you know, is auto, truck, motorcycle accidents. 
Uh, sure. So my clients are involved in those accidents. They're not at fault to the victims of the accident. Um, and um, I represent them, you know, for their injuries so that they can get the compensation, you know, that they deserve uh, for the treatment that they undergo, for any long-term effects from loss of earnings, um, you know, pain and suffering, all of those aspects. Um, and so I get to deal with my clients from the moment usually that this injury takes place um, until hopefully the point where I can reach a resolution for them, you know, in their case. Um, cool. So I get to live, you know, that journey with them. Yep. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you so much for that. Just kind of level setting things. So, okay, it's 2018. You decide, yep, I'm going to make this move here. We're now in 2023. Natasha, I'd love to get your take on and I know this, you're still relatively new in this, in terms of owning your running and doing everything with your own business, but what have been your biggest surprises? Like going into this, right? Wow, I thought X was gonna be super complicated and it wasn't that bad. Or, boy, I thought this was gonna, this part was gonna be pretty easy and it's, man, it's a lot of work, time, effort, whatever. I just wanna get your take on some of the learnings that you've had from starting your own business. Well, I would say, first of all, I come to realize that I'm only as good as the team that I have formed. So I feel very blessed that I have a great team of people that work for me um, or that I consult with. So, you know, both from my perspective of the staff that work for me, I have people, many of whom have worked with me for over a decade. Um, and, you know, they are just fantastic because I can't do everything. And then additionally, realizing that, you know, I'm a lawyer, but I have to turn to professionals, whether it's, you know, marketing, um, in that area, I spend a lot of time focused on on that aspect um, and having to turn to marketing professionals like yourselves um, to get that, you know, knowledge base and understanding as to some ways that I can help grow my business. So that's, you know, a huge part of, of what I do. Yes, lawyering is is the majority of what I do. But at the same time, I run a business um, and I have to help grow that business and bring in clients at the end of the day. So you just touched on this, and that is the idea of of marketing and promoting it. You're no surprise. You're in a super competitive space. There's a lot of there's a lot of competition, right? But there's a lot of competition in, in everything. So how did you how did you begin to approach marketing, Natasha? I, I, I mean, what was your kind of once you set up your practice? How did you just kind of evolve to that and have that kind of understanding? Kind of like, okay, I'm going to need to do X. Did you have some sort of idea? Did you start consulting with others right away? Kind of walk us through a little bit of a little bit of that. Yeah, I mean, I immediately did consult a marketing firm, and I did bring them, you know, on board um, to help me with that transition. So that was extremely, yeah. you know, important. But part of it was I had to figure out what my essentially brand was going to, going to be. And I think the other part of that is making sure that whatever the branding was, not just another suit, really embodies who I am in the type of practice and a law firm that I intended to run. So I think you can create a tagline or a slogan, right? But at the end of the day, if you don't fulfill that, then the marketing's not gonna be effective and you're not gonna be effective because your clients aren't gonna be satisfied you know, with the outcome because you promised them something that you didn't fulfill or live to. Um, so I had to think back. Um, and so the tagline, not just another suit, um, was something that was bounced around and came. I came up with um, and you know, every client is unique in my office, and I believe that my branding and my marketing fulfills that, but my team and myself, we embody that in making every client unique and individual. And I'm also, you know, a female um, in this market space as well. So there's kind of, you know, a double aspect to it. So, Kurt, like what Natasha just said, you would expect that coming out of you or me, right? I mean, that's what we say. That's what, but what is exciting about this is Natasha is talking about the importance of her brand, how you fulfill that. That is super interesting, Natasha. And just to be totally honest, I mean, like there's a lot of people both in marketing and out of marketing who don't get it. I mean, they yeah. don't see the connection there. So what you're talking about, again, like, did you, did you have to evolve into that? Did, that? Was there something that changed your opinion and coming across with that idea of, you know, my brand is important? Or was that something that you just kind of innately knew as you moved into your own business? Well, I think that I have a, you know, a certain way that I practice, right? The way that my firm is is set up, we embody that in, in what we do every day for our clients. But at the same time, the branding and the marketing had to fit that. So I feel like it kind of came together at the same time. I couldn't 
brand myself in a way that's not true to who I am as a as a person because I can only live up to those expectations if it truly is who I am you know I believe that I, I treat every client in case uniquely um and that they get you know the personalized attention that that case deserves well I think you are doing right now an awesome job of of exactly that I mean this is a male dominated space, or at least it's perceived that way. And your website, your marketing materials all comes across as something different, something unique. Yeah, it's probably not going to be for everybody, but it doesn't have to be for everybody. You got your target who you're going after. If somebody wants kind of a different look, feel, tone, way of doing business, I, I think you're doing an awesome job with that. Yeah, you know, I, I actually, uh, that was a great answer. It, Natasha and, and Pat, you're right. It's, it's, um, it was a, it, you know, that's something you would expect to hear maybe from, from the mouth of a brand practitioner, but I applaud your answer, Natasha. You know, I, my, my, my takeaway on, on the industry is, and it's like any industry, it's like there's a lot of sea of sameness out there. And it is what it is. And it gets back to the competitive um, climate of your industry. Um, but, you know, when I listen to you talk through, your brand, you know, it, it, to me, I'm writing down authentic, you know, not just something that's made up. You kind of alluded to the fact that it's our brand. What we came up with isn't something that we just miraculously just developed. It, it is who we are. I think it's important. And I don't, it doesn't matter if you're a, a personal injury law firm or if you're an advertising agency or if you're an accounting firm. I mean, it, that's the Holy grail. If you can try to find that. And then from there, everything else kind of you know, takes its place. So I applaud you for doing that. My question is, it is competitive, you know, and it's like, all you have to do is turn on the television set, drive on the highway, and I'm not going to name names, but there's some big players who are spending, and I know because it's our industry, I've, I've got a pretty good idea of what they're spending to advertise. Um, how do you, from a, you know, a, maybe we just boil it down to, you know, whether it's marketing or whether it's this new business, how do you compete against that? I mean, obviously, you know who you are, you know your lane, which I applaud. But how do you how do you get out there and throw your your fishing line into the water and try to get your fair share of the fish that are in the pond? Well, I think first of all, I've been patient, and what I mean by that was the understanding that I think marketing, at least from my perspective, as someone that's not a marketing professional, is that it takes time, right? Um, and so, you know, I've been very good about understanding that it's a long-term approach. So when marketing comes to me with an idea, I don't expect to see that immediate result on that item next week, right? But they'll say, Natasha, you got to give it six months. You got to you got to give it a year. And I did trust the marketing professionals and allowing them to guide me and trust them and say, okay, you're going to invest in, you know, whatever it may be in your website. And, you know, but you can't just say, oh, I'm going to invest in the website. I'm going to see the result tomorrow. Um, and I allow the opportunity for it to happen over time and it has, and that's exactly, you know, it continues to grow over the years. Um, so I think that the long-term goals are are important because sometimes you don't always see, you know, immediate results. Um, and I, I think that was something that I had to learn and kind of trust the process at times, um, you know, in this, in this market area. How do you, Natasha, how do you view, um, cause you, you obviously you, you you're a guest speaker and, um, you're very personable. I can, you know, this is the first time I've met Pat, Natasha, and Natasha, it's a compliment to you. You're very personable. How do you view networking? Because I view that as a channel too, in terms of a marketing channel. It's a great way to not only meet, but bring in business. How do you utilize networking to to grow your brand, bring clients? Is that something that has been beneficial to you? And maybe just share with us your, your, your um, philosophy on that. Yeah, absolutely. I think networking is so essential um, to any business because that personal connection that you have with individuals um, is is ultimately how I often get clients. I mean, the best form of a referral is someone who actually, to a certain extent, knows me, right? Whether it's a former client or somebody that I've met, you know, through the course of networking. Um, I think when you meet an individual, um, I always feel as though there's something that they can probably take away from me, right, on that meeting. But there's also something that I can take away from that interaction with them as well. Um, and I think when you kind of approach it that way um, over time, you know, you can kind of realize how we're all in this together, whether we're in different industries or market areas. 
but there might be a time where you need to call upon that person or they may need to call upon you. Um, and getting taking the time to know people, I think, is really important um, because I think it takes in what I do, it takes trust, you know, in that relationship. I agree with you. You know, what I find really interesting about you, Natasha, is the fact that, you know, when you were talking about marketing, you talked about it in terms of being patient. You know, a lot of people pay lip service to that. Um, but after they've committed the funds and made the made the investment and they're not seeing instant results, I've seen it plenty of time happen where they start second guessing themselves. They start second guessing the agency, their channels. They start pulling back. I just find it really super interesting that you were able to kind of say, no, I've got to wait some, I've got to wait some time. I got to give this, I got to be patient about this. Was that difficult for you at first? Or were you, again, were you just kind of like, no, I can, I can do this. I can wait. I know it'll build. I'm not a patient person. Okay. I mean, I didn't just sit back and say, I'll be patient with you. I think I learned that over time. Initially, you know, you're opening up a new office and you want to see that immediate result. Um, and so they said, you know, give us right. X amount of time. And then over, over time, because the practice has continued to grow, I've gained a lot of trust in them, right? My relationship has now formed over several years with them. I think they understand me um, and what I look for. And as a result of it, because of that trust, I, I think that I allow them the opportunity, you know, to achieve kind of what I expect of them. Granted, I'm asking questions along the way um, yep. and making sure that I, you know, I'm continuing to hound them. I mean, they'll tell you that I, you know, I'm constantly following up on items. But if they tell me it's going to take six months to see a result, well, then I have to trust them, too, that it will take six months to see that result or whatever it may be. I just find that really interesting. And, and uh, you're, I'd say that's, you're really smart about that. Natasha, the one thing I'm, um, uh, I'd like to understand a little bit more um, from you, and this is more on the kind of getting into the weeds and more a little bit about the business itself is personal injury, my understanding of it, and I could be totally wrong, but my understanding of it is you get a client, the client, something happens to that client, you may go to court, you may not go to court, things get settled, and then that's it. The client kind of goes his or her way. Because of that, there seems to be maybe a lot of churn within this within this space, as opposed to something like, let's say, corporate law, where you just kind of on an ongoing retainer. Do I have that right? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the only thing that's different is my clients aren't circulating through my office in a really quick process, right? So someone who's really seriously injured, you know, they're going to be my client for maybe three years or five years. It's going to be a long period of time. So okay. I form a relationship with that, you know, individual. You know, we've known them for how many years? I meet them sometimes at some of the most difficult and most challenging times of their life. Um, and I'd like to think that even though the case with them might conclude that they're going to be the best, you know, referral source for me, right? The biggest yeah. compliment is a referral um, and that they essentially would become, you know, an ambassador to, to me, if I do a good job, I would hope that they would refer their family and friends to me. I mean, that's that's you know what I what I believe will happen if you do a good good job for them. Yeah, yeah. You, I'm Natasha. One of the questions that I have for you is just explain to us you know, a day in the life of you. I mean, you know, before the before we started recording, you were talking about going for a, for a morning jog, but you seem to have a very, I mean, you're booked. It seems to me that you're like jam packed from the moment you get up to the moment you go to bed. You're, you've got a lot of things going on. Give us a glimpse inside inside your world. And what is it? What, what does a typical day look like for you? Well, that is true. Um, my calendar is generally pretty crazy, um, but I do take some me time in the morning. So I do get up, you know, relatively early. And I know, you know, beforehand you and I were chatting um, and I, you know, I went for a run this morning to kind of clear my head. I call it the hours before the emails start coming in. Um, and so I do that, you know, in the morning, that's my, my personal time. But then as soon as that's done, I, I get ready and I, I come into the office every day. Um, I rarely, you know, work remotely. Sometimes on the weekends I will, but I, I come into the office and I, I meet with my staff and my team and I check in with them um, to address any of those issues. So that's usually how I start my morning. 
Um, and then from there, you know, it goes anywhere from, you know, dealing with clients, you know, I negotiate. That's a large part of what I do. Um, and then, you know, throughout the day, it might be business calls or meetings, you know, on marketing related related matters. Um, but most of my solid work day is, you know, focused on, on casework um, and, you know, thrown in a million different directions. Um, and then, you know, kind of after five o'clock, that's the time I sit down and I can, you know, thoroughly study cases and respond to some additional emails. But I work probably all the time. I don't count hours, but I enjoy what yeah. I do. So it doesn't really seem like work. Mm -hmm. um, when it comes to marketing, Natasha, how do you how do you approach that? And what I mean by that is, um, I would imagine when you first started in 2018, the, one of the first things you probably had a, or probably did was, okay, we need to get a website up there. Most recently, I've seen your billboards around town, which look fantastic, by the way. So congrats on that. But what's your how are you approaching this? Like, OK, you know, I'm thinking about billboards now. Maybe I'm going to do some TV. How are you like kind of putting these puzzle pieces together? What's your kind of viewpoint of of, of that? How do you approach that? Yeah, I, I mean, I do work with a marketing company, um, so they do, you know, help come up with, you know, various suggestions or ideas um, gotcha. that they'll give to me. Um, and then, you know, try to come up with that strategy over, you know, three months, six months, whatever the plan uh, may be. But, you know, I'm absolutely focused on on those items. And, um, you know, sometimes it takes time to get things in motion. Um, so we're having, you know, to address that, you know, sooner, um, even though it might not go into effect, you know, for a few months. Got it. You got it. Um, in terms of you in your practice you've been you mentioned it a couple times business is growing things are looking good give us kind of an idea of like where's where are you going how big are you are, how big do you want to be like is chicago next are you moving out to new york where's the give us the like kind of the longer range plan of what are you thinking about well, well i think given you know what i do my focus is is going to remain within wisconsin i'm licensed in illinois as well um but you know my goal would be to continue you know to grow um, and as to where it takes, you know, it takes me, I, I don't have a crystal ball in this marketplace, um, but I can tell you that right now I feel very fulfilled. I've been very fortunate to have a practice that continues to grow. Um, and I just hope that it continues down, you know, that path. Yeah. And, you know, I mean, just drive around and Kurt, you mentioned it as well. There's a lot of players in this space, but yeah, there are. I don't know anyone. I mean, I don't know anyone who's branding themselves as like a woman who's doing this. I think this is like a, like a freaking golden opportunity for you, Natasha. Yeah, and I and I think that's something that, you know, my uh, the marketing company I work with, they they understand that and that it's important to me that, you know, that's brought into the messaging, um into the website, you know, in the blogging, all of those aspects of it, you know, as well. Um to understand who I am, you know, yes, I'm a female lawyer, um but at the same time, you know, you get the individualized attention that I believe every case and client deserves. Yeah. Yeah. I was just going to say it's, um, you know, it's, it's, it is tough and it's a, it, like it, it gets back to what I was talking about earlier. It is a competitive industry. Um, but as I was going through your website, obviously, and this is probably better, m m this is better than anything I could see in a billboard or going to your website. I'm talking to you. And it gets back to what you said earlier, Natasha, in terms of networking. Um, so I'm really getting a flavor. I, you know, I, as I look at some of the messaging out there and I look at what some of the other law firms are doing, particularly in, in personal injury, you know, some of them seem very transactional. It's kind of like it's all about, you know, the result. And it is, right? So, but then I see others where it's, you know, it's all about the, the feel good. And, you know, for me, you know, I, I want to be selfish. I think I want both. You know, and I was hearing that from you, you know, in terms of like, you've got to be good at what you do. You got to be good at your craft. Check the box. And the same thing for, for Pat and I. It's like, we're a really good advertising agency. Pat's firm is a very good digital firm. If we weren't, we wouldn't be around. But there is also that that other part of it you were talking about, Natasha. It's it's the, um, I don't know what the right word is. It bedside manner. I've, you know, I've had doctors before who I'm sure were, they were brilliant best medical schools. And I just didn't vibe with them. The doctor I have now, I do. And I think it's it's the same case in your industry and in our industry. It's like, Natasha has got to be really good at what she does. I have no doubt. It's like, you wouldn't be around, but it's the bedside manner too. Let's just call it that where it's like, that's probably what, you know, the people need that, especially in the, in the 
it, think about the state they're coming to see you in. So I, I don't know. I mean, am I off base or am I, I don't know where I'm going with this, uh, the, the yeah. TV, but I'm just, no. I'm trying to, you know. A figure, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I think that there's an aspect why I originally said in order to market, I think, well, as a lawyer, you know, your branding has to fulfill the type of, you know, lawyer or the way that you approach, you know, a client or a case, right? Um, and so, yeah, the bottom line of a successful or good result for your client is is the goal, right? But, you know, when clients call me, you know, they're probably choosing me for a reason, right? For them to pick up the phone and to choose to call my office, right? There's something that resonated, whether it's somebody that they knew, something that they read, you know, online or on my website. And part of it is I, I don't have to, if the marketing matches who I am, right? It's going to, you know, I'm going to answer and probably be the right fit for them. Um, and, you know, if they're calling because, you know, they need compassion, you know, then that's what we'll give them. Um, at the same time, you know, I have clients too that at the end of the day, you know, it, it is about, you know, that end result. And that's mm -hmm. fine too, if that's the approach, you know, you learn to kind of deal with different clients, but most of the time they're calling you because they like something about the way, you know, your philosophy or your mission, right? Um, and if that's, you know, if you fulfill on your philosophy when they call you, I think that then they'll be the right, you know, you'll be the right fit for them. And they'll want to choose you, you know. And I can only imagine the emotions too. It's like I think about the talents that someone like you or in your industry. It's like, yes, of course, you have to be a a law practitioner. You have to understand the law. But you know, there's also it, there's there's therapy. There's emotions. There's there's so much that's involved. Where when that first phone call comes in or someone's coming to see you, I mean, again, I go back to what I said. I'm thinking about why they might be seeing you in this, in the, the emotional state they're in. It's like, they're, I mean, emotions are big. It's kind of like, you know, it's like <clears throat> until we can get over, you know, the fear, the, the emotions, we can't probably really have a good conversation about how you're going to help get me to the finish line as you talk about. So I can, you're probably a, a master of juggling a lot of talents. You have to. Yeah. I mean, the competency is there. I've handled thousands of cases, but there's a human element to it, you know, um, at mm -hmm. the end of the day, you know, I am meeting them at some of the most challenging or difficult, you know, aspects of their life. They've been injured. They can't work. You know, financially, they're struggling. Emotionally, they're struggling. Mm -hmm. um, and to me, it might be, you know, I've handled all these cases, but to them, it's the only case probably for right. them. Right. It's the only accident that they will have been in. Um, and, you know, I, I try to make sure that I understand that and I make sure my team understands that that for this person, this is their life, and this is the only time they'll probably be confronted with this problem. And we need to be compassionate and understand that. Um, and when they gain trust in you, they'll realize that, you know, we're going to be effective at what we do, you know, professionally to get, you know, their goals accomplished financially in terms of, you know, compensation for their injuries. But at the same time, you know, we're humans, we're, you know. <laughs> yeah. I, I, love how, I love how you said that. You know, it's like to our team, it's like, you know, hey, team, we might have done this thousands and thousands of times but please remember for our client this is their first this is their only so um i like how you phrased that so yeah that's huge and, and that's mm -hmm. how, I, you know people are coming to you and now, now your employees they're coming and they have law degrees they have background they have experience but it seems like a really key part of this is is your brand and that compassion that you're bringing to each case that you come across like how this seems to me the really challenging part of your business too is how do you train right other people so they're just like Natasha right you because you can't be everywhere you can't do everything you mentioned it's like I can't go I don't like I can't be everybody I can't meet everyone I can't do every meeting right so do you have like you know like ways or like this is the Natasha way here's what we do in this kind of case Absolutely. I mean, I think that's that's crucial. And I think communication with your team um, is so important. Um, so, you know, routine meetings, whether it's working lunch meetings, um, sit down individual meetings, and then obviously entire, you know, entire office meetings so that everybody's on the same page um, and really understanding what we do. Because to me, sometimes the worst response is, well, at the old firm, we did it this way, or yep. at this other firm I was at, we did it this way. Yep. Okay, that's great. That's fine. But here we do it this way for a reason. And I think having people understand why we do things a certain way and making sure that, you know, we're, we're providing what it is that our clients are looking for and kind of going that extra step 
um, is so important. But having the team on the same page is is so crucial, like you said, Pat. I don't know how you do it. I mean, <clears throat> I mean, I think it would be hard enough just running a practice by yourself and just being a good lawyer and keeping up with everything that's going on with changes to the law, working with people that are in very, very difficult situations and totally emotional. But now you've got a blend running an office marketing. I'm glad I'm in digital advertising. OK, Kurt. <laughs> You have to trust the people you work with. I mean, I, I, know. I can't emphasize that enough, right? Yeah. So, you know, I have, an, un, you know, I think I have this, you know, somewhat of a very basic understanding of marketing, right? But then I have to rely upon the people that I work with for your expertise so that, you know, I can trust them when they're making a recommendation. You know, I, I'm not going to, I want the totally. end result. And if I trust them, I, I'm going to trust that they're going to know how to, how to get or take it there. Totally. But again, Natasha, Kurt and I have heard that said, said by so many people, but they don't believe it where mm -hmm. I'm coming. You actually are are saying it, but you're walking the talk, too. So <laughs> that seriously, I think that's what really makes you stand out. Um, well, I'd say I'd say I'd say too, Pat, it's, it gets back to Natasha was talking about networking and we talked about the importance and I'd say um, I, I like how, how you phrase that, Natasha, you had said earlier you were you were. You were giving kudos to your team and yeah I, all i would say from a you know i from a networking perspective when i think about how i network it's like i like networking with people like natasha i like networking with people that you know yes if you look at my 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 network of course there's going to be marketing and brand practitioners but boy there's a lot of others that's how we learn and that's how we get smart and uh, we become, become more well-rounded so um be pretty boring, Pat, if it's just if I just networked with you, right? Or you know <laughs> yeah. people. I mean, it would be. It's like, or anyway. I know. I know. <laughs> Natasha, thank you so much for being on the podcast. Um, as I said, you're gonna have the last word. So talk to us. How do people find out about you? How do people get in touch with you? Whatever you want to say, whatever you want to promote, this is your time. So have at it. Well, I'd like to, you know, thank you for the opportunity to be on the show. Um it it was really an enjoyable, you know, hour. Um, if you need to find me, you know, not just another suit, um, my website, you know, natashamiserlaw.com. Um, and I appreciate, you know, the opportunity to be heard. Um, and, uh, and, and I hope that I could give some tidbits of what it's like to be, you know, a professional and what it's like to have to deal with the marketing aspect, you know, in addition to, you know, balancing what I really do, which is lawyer. Um, so thanks for your time today. You've been great. We'll put all that information in the show notes, Natasha. Uh, keep kicking ass and come back. Love to hear how things are progressing for you. Thanks so much. Cheers, Cheers everybody. Thank you. Thank you.